Hey everybody, so uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different kind of a video. It's off from what I normally do in my channel. Uh, but today I'm hiking to a place in Idaho called Loon Lake. And in Loon Lake, there is a plane, it's a World War II bomber, that crashed in 1942 or 3, I think it was January of 43. It's a B-23 bomber, and it's still there. The crew all survived. And uh, I'm almost to the lake. It's, it's actually over my shoulder down in that clearing. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit of what I find with you. So uh, here we go. Today, getting to the crash site is not easy. The terrain is rough, and there was a forest fire here a few years ago, which left many fallen trees. There is a good trail from the Chinook campground about five miles to the north, all the way to the edge of Loon Lake but the plane lies on the far side of the lake and you have to walk all the way around. I opted to go around the east side of the lake, which has no clearly defined trail to the plane, and I had to rely on dead reckoning to find my way around the lake to the crash site. As you can see, the area is difficult to traverse, even in good weather with no snow. I can only imagine what this must have been like in the middle of a bitter winter with five feet of snow on the ground. Picture this. It's January, 1943. Pearl Harbor was invaded a little more than a year earlier, and World War II would continue to rage on for more than another year. That month, a B-23 Dragon bomber, built in 1939 but already superseded by later designs, was involved in testing whether it would work well as a submarine spotter. Having finished the testing, the bomber headed back to McCord Air Force Base near Seattle, Washington, with eight souls on board. They were the pilot, Lieutenant Robert Orr, Lieutenants Kelly and Shermerhorn, Sergeants Hoover, Freeborg, Pruitt, Llewellyn, and Corporal Beaudry. Well, I've been hiking for about a mile past the lake now, and I must be getting close because that is a wingtip right over my shoulder there. And if I'm not mistaken, the plane itself is back in those trees. So let's go see if we can find it. I found it. This is not easy to get to. The trails are not well marked. But with a little bit of determination and ignoring the rain, I managed to get here. Shortly after the midway point of the flight, the bomber hit a massive snowstorm and was unable to land at McCord Airfield. They were rerouted by radio to the airfield in Burns, Oregon, but the weather had gotten so bad that they circled above Burns for over 20 minutes, unable to locate the airfield. The crew decided to head east, hoping the weather would be better near Boise, Idaho, and that they would be able to land at Gowan Airfield there. However, they then lost radio contact with the ground and experienced severe icing on the windows and on the wings. By this time, their fuel was running low and it became obvious to the crew that they would not make it to Boise. Lieutenant Orr ordered the crew to put on parachutes and be ready to jump. Around this time, one of the crew spotted what looked like a large open field on the ground. It was actually the frozen, snow-covered Loon Lake. The pilot decided to try to land there, but on their first pass, they had too much airspeed, and their flaps were frozen, so they could not slow down enough to land. As they circled around for a second pass, the right engine caught fire, and they wound up overshooting the lake and going into the trees, shearing off both wings and crushing the Bombardier's compartment. Crewman Freeborg said, quote, immediately we all jumped out of the plane fearing it might catch fire, close quote. Only two of the eight were injured. Lieutenant Orr suffered a badly cut hand from hitting the instrument panel on impact, and Sergeant Hoover sustained multiple injuries, including a broken kneecap, a broken wrist, a cut hand, lacerations on his face, and a broken foot. 
A makeshift camp was set up with the parts of the plane and a fire to keep them warm. The crew remained together at the crash site for several days. On February 1st, Freeborg worked for hours trying to get the radio to work. He managed to transmit only one message, quote, crew intact, need food, clothing, and an ax at the south end of the lake near Boise, Idaho, close quote. This would be all the military had to go by and Freeborg was not even sure if anyone had received it. But the message was received all the way up in Victoria, British Columbia in Canada, though the records indicate that the detail about being near Boise was somehow missed. A massive search and rescue effort was launched with more than 70 planes in constant operation during daylight hours. During this massive search, the downed airmen spotted three separate planes and fired flares, but the planes did not see them and continued on. On Tuesday evening, February the 2nd, the crew decided that the three most able-bodied men should attempt to walk out and find some help. Lieutenant Shermerhorn and Sergeants Pruitt and Freeborg were chosen and they left at 9 a.m. on February 3rd. They hiked to the top of a nearby ridge to see what type of territory they had to walk through and to determine the best route out. Freeborg later wrote, quote, Believe me, that was the most disappointing sight I had ever hoped to see. Hills, hills, and more hills in every direction. Believe me, I firmly believed that we looked in the face of death." Close quote. These three hiked through waist-deep snow for six days when they found a forest service map on the wall of a log cabin near the Zena Creek, which helped the men identify their location and a route to McCall. Frequent avalanches were observed as they followed telephone lines through knee-deep snow up a V-shaped valley and over Lick Creek summit. After 13 days, they found an old camp building where they left the injured Pruitt. Freeborg and Schirmerhorn continued the last five miles to the Lake Fork Guard Station where they found a telephone and managed to get a hold of an operator in McCall. These airmen had walked 35 to 40 miles over the course of 15 days. Eleven days after the three men left to walk out, pilot Dan Storr flew over the lake on a routine mail route to Warren, Idaho, and spotted the wreckage. Storr had been taking different routes to and from Warren each day in the hopes of spotting the plane, and it worked. He did not land right then, but flew back to Gowan Field in Boise and reported that he had found the missing B-23. Shortly after that, an army plane flew over and dropped some supplies to them, and the next day Storr flew back in and landed on the lake to ferry the crew back to Boise. All eight men survived. I share about this today because I am in awe of the determination, the gumption, and the resolution that the men who landed here must have had in order to pick themselves up and survive. And this is a lesson for me about how difficult it sometimes can be in the face of adversity. That's all I really wanted to say. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and even though it's a departure from my typical kind of thing, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. Thanks for watching.